hey good morning once again uh, welcome to you all so this is our talk one of today's meetup and that's by sadanand akshay pai he is a senior engineer in trello bro so over to you sana sadanand thanks pai so you can share your screen sadanand yeah you can share yeah. your screen and anybody have a question they can uh, put on a questions tab uh so then uh, in between so in between or maybe at the end of the talk we can entertain those uh, questions that works sadana yes patra okay cool so yeah over to you so you can introduce yourself sadana uh, and then you can get yeah oh my screen is visible to everybody yes it is yes Okay. Yeah, uh, myself uh, Sadhananda Shivai. So a little bit of uh, my introduction. Uh, currently, I am having two years of experience as a front-end developer. I am working at uh, Trellivar. Uh, feel free to connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. So my ID is Sadhananda Shivai. Uh, today's session will be on uh, animations uh, using React. So a uh, famous animation library in React is uh, one of the famous one is React Spring. so we will look into the react spring animations and how can we implement it in react uh, with the lesser number of code so let me start with the basics of web animation so basically what is web animation so if you see this is also this web uh, this slide is also animated the way the contents have come the first point which has come is also animated so animation is nothing but how we move the elements or how the elements are manipulated to look like it is getting animated or it is in motion so that is nothing but the animation and it is not only with respect to the web pages it can be any other stuffs uh, maybe a video or are... so we move elements from one state to another So as most of us are web developers, so we what we can understand from this is that so let's take an example of a uh, an element which moves from hidden state to visible state. So it doesn't happen uh, immediately. So it gradually moves from the state where the opacity is zero to the state where the opacity is one, or it can be any number of states involved for that element. Uh, this gives a better UX as well. And other than that, uh, what is the purpose of animation in the web pages? So animations are not only to make the visual things better, but also to convey some important information. For example, we have a complex idea or the process, so we can animate the complete process so that user will understand with the images and the moving parts alone. so user will not have to go through the complete documentation or the complete process because the images will talk more than what the text content can convey so yeah so coming to the animations in the web pages uh, we can achieve animations in web pages in multiple ways so one of the ways and traditionally we have been all following is using css cascading style sheets so here you can see animations are generally performed using css in web pages and those are used generally for the simple kind of animations still we can achieve complex animations but the amount of effort and the code involved in that uh, complete animation will be more than uh, what we uh, generally do so this can be achieved in css in uh, multiple ways so one of the ways uh, which we are all uh, familiar is with transition so if you have used transition property within css so you can give transition to uh, many of the properties in css and that will transition from one state to another so this is very basic animation which you can achieve using transitions then we have animation feature inside uh, css which is specifically brought in css to make animations possible uh, we achieve animation uh, in css using keyframes so whenever you mention an animation to be performed 
So along with that, you mentioned the keyframes where you give the state from which state to which state it has to move, and in in kind of percentages where each uh, part you divide, and then you giving the kind of curve. So if you know uh, is in is out, so if you have heard about that, that is nothing but we define the curve and the time duration to achieve that state change. For example, you are moving from one state to another. You define how within how many seconds it has to happen. So generally, it will not be in minutes; it will be in seconds. So you can mention that time, and then you can animate uh, multiple properties. Uh, coming to the code and animations, so as I have explained, it mainly depends on the duration and the curve, which we are giving all that web element or multiple web elements to achieve this. So now uh, let's try to understand how CSS animations are different from JavaScript animations. So first point we have to understand is that we can achieve animations not only using CSS, also we can achieve the animations using JavaScript. So what is the use of doing uh, animations in JavaScript? So JavaScript is used when we need significant control over the animations. So in CSS, if you have used a lot of uh, things to animate, so you might be knowing that animating using CSS is not that easy task. So you have to make sure that you define the end result and you have to make sure that the curve is completely defined. Otherwise, you will have to make sure that at each point you interrupt and modify the values uh, present for that curve. So these things will be there in the CSS. But JavaScript will give more control over the animations. So a simple uh, example I can give. Uh, CSS is not a programming language in the sense it does not give you complete programming control, but JavaScript does. So that alone uh, helps you to understand why JavaScript is better to control the animation. Yeah, Sadan, I'm sorry to sorry to disturb you. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Hey, hey, uh, can you guys th give a thumbs up? Are you able to hear Sada and me uh, properly? Yeah, I can see thumbs up now. Okay, Sada, you can continue because uh, uh, sometime back, uh, was Shivi was complaining, so she was not able to hear. Okay. Okay, uh, you can continue. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that is how we do animations. So let's coming to coming back to JavaScript part. So in JavaScript animation, the change the property which belongs to that animation and the movement will be done using JavaScript. So this is a simple example, but we will see different kinds of things which we can achieve using JavaScript. And uh, uh, earlier, uh, how people used to do animation, uh, it's a bit technical uh, stuff. If you don't know, it's fine. Uh, but uh, the timers are used. So if you have used the set timeout or set interval, you will know that to this interval keeps calling a function, which you have defined. And then it keeps calling that, and it keeps changing the state of the object. So doing this, uh, so the web development has moved a lot after uh, uh, from earlier. Yeah. Okay. Am I not audible completely? Now, uh, Petro, is it clear or not? It is clear for me, but I think you are complaining of some frame drops in between. Okay. Okay, so uh, light yeah, mode is someone switched. Okay, Abhishek switched to light mode and it's okay for him. Yeah, you can continue. I can hear you loud and clear. Manually, 
you can request browser to give a call back to our function on every repaint so if you understand how the repaint works so you will understand how request animation frame works so on every frame so for example if you consider the monitor which we are giving giving 60 frames per second and on each frame the painting is happening so there is no point introducing 80 frames per second in our animation which where 20 frames will be wasted in the sense we will not be able to see those 20 frames and giving such animation to see not be better It is uh, and, uh, angles as well. So this is one more kind of animation where flip card is happening. And here there is a gesture involvement which is taking place. Hope you are able to see what I'm doing. Then the parallax effect and many more. So you might be uh, getting the idea now how animation works. So it can be very simple micro animations as well or it can be a complete animation like which you are seeing where the colors are changing, the width is changing, it is moving etc. So hope uh, you have the clarity over the animations which we are talking now. Okay, uh, moving back to the slides. So why spring animations? So as you have understood now how animations can be achieved using CSS, JavaScript and now today's topic is uh, spring animations uh, mainly using a library in the React. So the reason why we go for spring animation is that spring animations give more real look to the uh, animations which we are achieving in using JavaScript. So if I say for example Uh, if hello hello yeah so then it looks like your screen share is stopped maybe you have okay, okay. This uh, am I audible and uh, screen share is visible now? Screen share is not, but you're audible. Can you share the screen again? Yes, yes. Hey guys, my voice is uh, loud and clear, audible. Thumbs up, please. Okay. Is my screen visible now? Not yet. I am not able to see your screen. Is Sada's screen visible to you guys? No, right? No, yeah. So no screen, Sada. Okay, sorry for that. Uh... Uh, let me know if it is visible now. No, not yet.
he said uh, are you able to hear me yeah actually i have shared the screen but still it's uh, not visible have you shared the entire screen yes. or some window you can check that yeah entire screen i have shared is it still not visible patro no i can't so what it's saying to you like share maybe you can go to rejoin hi uh, this showing is uh, your screen uh, sharing your screen stop sharing it yeah sorry about this folks so this is one of the problem of <laughs> online stuff but yeah hopefully sadana will be back he said are you you rejoined yes i have rejoined and reshared and it is showing uh, the screen is being shared okay so yeah what do you do? yeah you can yeah so what we can do in meantime we can take a break uh, and then we can go to our lounge we can chit chat with one another and meantime we'll figure it out uh, so then uh, screen share sounds good guys so once you take a break you you go to lounge section and in lounge section uh, there is an opportunity you guys can connect with each other and we can talk like how we talk in our uh, regular offline meetups okay so okay we're good to go so screen share is working now so the browser restart has fixed the problem for sadana so, so we'll continue yeah so in the meantime we have a question which asked by bhupati uh, anyone can share a good website which uses react spring so that you like to answer or yeah so coursandbox.io is the website which uses uh, react spring and many more are mentioned in their uh, official website now cool. so you can go to their official website hopati awesome i think pratham prathap also uh, pasted something uh, reply to that okay you can continue sadanan so sorry guys for this uh, disruption it was out of our control okay continue sadanan please yeah uh, sorry to everyone uh let me continue from where i had uh, left off uh, so spring animations uh, so why do we need spring animation uh, with the normal animations which we can achieve with the css and javascript so let's try to understand the animations earlier were introduced just to make some basic animations with the css and then the uh, web, web development had advanced and we got to know we can do with the uh, javascript as well some advanced stuff so now we have reached to the point where we need not only the animations but animations of good quality and normally uh, how this spring animation is different from the normal animation so let's try to understand that point so when you do some stuff so for example you throw a ball 
in the air i am talking about the real scenario so when you throw a ball so you do not define that within one second it has to touch the ground and within next one second it has to hit the wall and then in next two seconds it has to come back to us so you are not defining the time and you are not telling the the uh, kind of curve as well so you will not tell that the ball has to move in uh, the ease out uh, style and then while coming back it has to ease in so these stuffs you won't tell so you when you throw a ball it is defined by the mass of the ball and the tension which we create and the friction so friction in the air will be very less but you can imagine you throw the ball into a water the friction will be more so because of which the movement will not be same as how you throw the ball in the air so this is how the reality works and this is what they have tried to bring into our uh, animation so here you can see the animations which is happening at the right hope you are able to see it is in the fashion of spring where the mass is attached which is nothing but the load and the tension which is present in the spring and the friction uh, which is uh, kind of very minimal you can say but still there will be a friction present in the spring so these kind of animations will look more natural and uh, very much real so that is the purpose people are moving slowly towards the spring animations so the same points i have mentioned here so let's try to understand this with one example so here i have i have an example which you can see the mass tension and the friction so hope all are able to see it properly so you can see uh, the weight is being pulled and you can see the spring animations in action so let me decrease the friction here and you can see when the friction is less the animations or the movement will be more and when the tension is high so you can see the spring with the high tension so the animation looks a bit different and when the mass is more so obviously you can see according to the mass attached to the spring the animation will look more natural so this is what you define so you define what should be the mass tension and friction and rest of the things will be taken care by the library or the animations uh, which I, which is implementing it so you are not worried like after how many seconds it has to stop so any doubt in the spring animation basics yeah a uh, website link i'll be sharing it okay fine right. so this is what the spring animation so once you understand this uh, understanding the how we code will be bit easier uh, so let's uh, go to the spring library so i have a ready made project uh, to show so let me open that so this is a project hello world which i have created so let's do some live coding here so hope you are able to see my screen uh, the vs code and uh, uh, the local host which i am running please give thumbs up if everything looks fine okay so what we are doing we are here uh, doing a simple animation so the code will not take much time so let me show how we import so i am importing animated and use spring from use uh, library spring library so what it does we'll uh, try to understand uh, quickly so let me try to use this spring so here i'm having the spring uh, being defined so let me type it so here you can see i am creating a variable x so the basic of react hooks you should be aware so that we are not discussing today so we are creating a spring so that is by u spring and we are defining from where it should go till where and we are not telling that it should take 1 second 2 seconds or anything so it will happen all by show you the full code so what i am doing is i am calling the hook u spring and telling from which value it has to go till which value 
and the animation will take place automatically. So let me refresh it. You can see the number is moving from one point to another. So I have few demos ready. So here one more point for you to understand is here uh, we are using animated dot div, not the real div. What it does is it makes sure that the animation will happen outside the React. It is not happening inside the React. The problem or the challenge if it happens inside the React is that the React tree will re-render every time the value changes. For example, if I refresh and you are able to see this value, it has changed like 1000 times or 10,000 times or whatever it is. So the animations which are running is happening outside. To prove that I can have a console log here and render I can type. Then if you see it is happening only once. The render console log has come once. That means the animation, the React tree is not rendering multiple times. So this is the power of uh, React Spring or any similar library. So I have a few examples. So let me show you. So here you can see the value is increasing, uh, decreasing from one value to another. That is from uh, red, uh, sorry, 100 to 0. So let me show you one more example using hooks. So here if you see, I am defining a time frame also. So it is not that you cannot define a time. So you can define the time where the animation will take place. So that is one more example. And next example you can see with the multiple animations where it is rotating at the same time it is zooming as well. So zooming is done using the scale. So you can see and at the stop where it is stopping, uh, it is not stopping immediately. But you can see there is a oval kind of animation which is happening. And the last demo we have is we are increasing the number. So which we have already seen. But the only new thing is here you can't see the decimal place. So that is done using the interpolation. So let me show you the code where we are interpolating it. So the code is almost same. We can interpolate or we can stop at any point of time in the uh, animation. So yeah. So now moving back to the Spring library uh, concept. Yeah, these code are present in Code Sandbox. I'll be sharing that link as well. So uh, yeah, so these are uh, physics based animation which are taking place uh, within uh, uh, React and it is currently specific to React uh, and you are not able to use it outside the React. Uh, but there are many other spring based libraries if you are working on Angular or any other frameworks. So generally you go for that when you have advanced use cases or you want to make it very realistic and it is not generally applicable for enterprise applications where such demand is not present, but for gaming industries and animation industries. So as I said, uh, the points which I had noted, the same things I have put it here. So this makes very much easier to handle. And these are not the only values. So if you have seen the color changes from red to green, where you define just red and green, and the value changes slowly from red to green, and you are not defining how it should change. So it doesn't change immediately from red to green after 50% or something. So it's gradually changes, which is taken care by the library. So that is why I've written that it takes care of colors, unit, SVG paths, and many more. OK, so this is the sample code, which I have already explained to you. So here is we are importing, we are defining the values, and we are animating. So this is giving you the low level access to our uh, program or the animation. So animation hooks. So there are many animation hooks. So we have just seen the use uh, spring uh, hook currently. But there are many other animation hooks uh, which are available. And according to React Spring library, what they say is these will be more than enough. These five uh, hooks are more than enough to achieve any kind of complex animation without much effort in our React uh, projects. So I'll not uh, go into each one of these, but you can uh, explore whatever they have given in the website. So uSpring is for single, uSprings is for multiple such elements, and uStrail is something which follows the uh, next 
uh, uh, frame. So if something is moving, so the next element will follow it, and the element next to it will follow that element. So in this, there is a trail effect, which I will show with one example now. And then we go for use transition. Whenever there is a transition effect required, it is mainly used for unmount. Where in React, if something unmounts, you cannot uh, animate it. The reason being that part of the element or the object is taken out from the React virtual DOM tree. So once it is taken out, it immediately shows the new tree. So whatever the element which is not present in the tree cannot be animated the way you want. But this library helps you to do that as well. And use chain is to make sure that the animation will happen in chain. So one after the other, it will take place. OK, so the configuration uh, wise, uh, we do not have much time. So uh, we will not be able to do the configuration changes with the mass tension and other stuff. But you can configure each and everything where you define the mass should be this much and the friction should be very low and uh, tension should be very high. So it is completely configurable for you for your requirement. And multiple animations can also be chained, uh, chained or can be uh, executed parallelly, which we have seen already with the example where the square uh, box moves, uh, zooms in at the same time it rotates and it will wobble as well when it uh, stops. So the natural movement can be achieved easily. And also we have seen the values can be interpolated according to your needs where I didn't want to mention the decimal values. So I had just interpolated that value and removed the last two, uh, sorry, uh, the decimal part by flooring the value. So it's a bit technical, but it is easy to achieve. And then we have springs. Uh, uh, yeah, so for the performance, if you ask me uh, if it is happening at that phase, uh, what is the performance impact? The performance impact will be there uh, compared to CSS, but it will not be so much that the application will hang or it will make an impact. Uh, one reason, because uh, we are running that animation outside the React, uh, where React tree rendering is not effective. And second thing is library is uh, managing the animation so effectively that you are not manually doing it by yourself. So libraries uh, which can be helpful along with this library are that uh, React use gesture, wherever you want to have a gesture kind of animation. And then React use is one more library which you can use for measuring the uh, window size, the scroll width, and the place where you want to scroll, etc. So you can consider this has to be a library which can be uh, used along with the React Spring and which fits very well. And other famous libraries what we have with the React uh, Spring are uh, Framework Motion, uh, React Transition Group, and React Twinful. These are also good libraries. So if you compare a competitor uh, uh, with the React Spring, that is Framework Motion, which is very uh, easy to use and uh, very uh, simple compared to React Spring, but React Spring uh, uh, gives more control over the basic stuffs, the fundamental stuffs compared to Framework Motion, which gives you the ready-made stuffs, which you just can use directly in your project. So you can explore both. So there is uh, nothing like one library is much better than something else. So let me show you one last uh, example to wind up the session. So this is the application which I have created recently using uh, React Spring. So let me go to the home page so you can see the way it moves. So here the trail animation is used where initially F comes and then it U follows F and then N follows U and then D follows N, etc. So I'll show you again. So this is how the trailing animation works. And then I click on Let's Fender. Am I audible and visible? All good? Uh, please give thumbs up. Yeah, thank you. So here you can see I have done a, a transition at the same time I am dragging it. So it is looking more natural. So let me leave it. So whenever I leave this uh, mouse down, so you can see it is settling very smoothly. And whenever I move this, 
so it is not that gra uh, immediate but it is gradually changing so when whenever i dislike it will be like this whenever i like it will be like this and i can click on this like button also to make it very natural so these are all things which were present in uh, the native application building but we can also do these stuffs using uh, react uh, uh, sorry web applications as well. so the web application has become very powerful yeah so that's it for for today from my side so sorry for the uh, disconnection happened in between the session and uh, thanks to everybody for listening and thanks to uh, javascript meetup group for giving me an opportunity yes yeah, sadan it was to check okay and the next is i think little out of react spring do you use kite for auto completion sorry do you use kite for auto completion uh, so the auto completion on your id id abhishek is asking okay in the id uh, you mean the auto yes Yeah, VS Code. Who, who, how this auto completion is happening? That's what uh, Abhishek wants. Yeah, to so uh, I am using uh, actually this one. Uh, let me show you. Uh, tab nine. Uh, tab nine is uh, responsible to complete uh, a based auto completion. Awesome. So this is the one. Okay. So, if any more question to Sadanand, uh, we'll just for wait for a minute uh, before closing uh, this session and jumping to our second session of the day by Parun. So, one minute if any questions for Sadanand. It was really a cool talk, Sadanand. I love all the demos with those animations. Thank you. So I have pasted the course and box link in the chat where all the demos are present, and the application under which I have created. So shall I post that as well? Yeah, you can share whatever uh, you like to share, Sudan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so we'll be moving to our. Uh, next session thank you very much sadanand for your time and effort uh, so you can be around so if any questions you guys you can directly ping to sadanand uh, also and he will able to reply on chat so i'm just closing the session so we'll be just uh, moving to another session in couple of minutes stay tuned